Do you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Have you even heard about it? Well, believe it or not, almost 100 million Americans suffer from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I think most people when I talk about liver are like, I don't drink very much, I don't need to worry about my liver. But this disease is on the rise, especially in women over 50, and partly on the rise due to our obesity epidemic and epidemic of metabolic issues. In this video, we're gonna break down how to avoid and prevent and maybe even treat non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and why it even starts to begin with. Now look, I've been talking for a long time about the liver and how important the liver is and glucose control, insulin regulation, and just about how it plays such a big role in where we will store visceral fat. That's the fat that we store around our organs or around our belly and really impact our overall health. In fact, there's so many studies that talk about how when visceral fat goes up, there's more inflammation and it's often a precursor to some of the most serious diseases we see today, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune disease, cancer, and so much more. What's happening though is that many people assume their livers are healthy. There's nothing wrong with them, but then may start to get a few little symptoms here and there or start to have elevated liver enzymes and are shocked to find on an ultrasound that they have fatty liver. And what it means for them is they're not able to detox or break things down effectively. They have a lot more trouble managing blood sugar levels. So numbers like a hemoglobin A1C goes high or a fasting blood glucose gets high as well. Obviously, one of the biggest signs and symptoms is weight and the impact it has on weight and vice versa. Well, we wanna reverse non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and understand what are the factors at play that may be driving it. Well, here's what we understand. We know that age is a factor. The liver gets more sluggish, gets more sensitive to everything. So there's a higher risk for NAFLD is the acronym used in people that are getting older, specifically over 50. We know that menopause is a risk factor and many women suffer from this as their hormones shift and change what the gut is doing and change overall metabolic health. We also know that metabolic conditions like hypertension, diabetes, all impact fatty liver disease and influence the storage of fat around the liver. Now, sometimes you might have symptoms, sometimes you might not. So don't get fooled if you think everything is feeling okay. We know that some of the symptoms include abdominal pain, usually right up here, right on that right upper quadrant, which is where our liver sits. In addition to that, there might be a general feeling of just fullness and uncomfortableness. There may also be more chemical sensitivity and just a different tolerance for certain foods and certain different substances. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is often discovered not by symptoms, but by lab work. When we see numbers like an AST or an ALT start to get really high without any explanation. And we can see that definitely in women. We see it in some men too. So what are you doing that could be increasing your risk for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and what can you do to prevent it? Well, we know certain foods are going to make it worse, right? So we know alcohol is gonna make it worse. We know excessive caffeine, sugar, saturated fats all play a role in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease by impacting metabolism and overall insulin blood sugar balance. So that's the chemistry that you wanna keep in mind. And this means this takes us right back to many of the same foods that we keep talking about that trigger leaky gut or trigger inflammation in general. Check out this video where we break down all things inflammation and leaky gut. All right, so we know the bad guys, sugar, saturated fats, alcohol, excessive caffeine, too many prescription medications can be a part of that as well. Too many supplements even can be a part of that. Anything that's increasing the body burden of the liver. And honestly, the hormonal piece is a part of it. Women that are estrogen dominant have a lot more issues with fatty liver. Again, we know this chemistry, estrogen dominance, or when the body can't break estrogen down, leads to insulin resistance, usually has fatty liver as a part of that puzzle. And again, if you don't remember what estrogen dominance is, check out this video where we talk a lot more about that. So those are some of the factors involved in driving non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But what can you do to turn it around or prevent it? Well, here's 
here's the good news. There are foods and often some supplements that can help you as well. So first of all, we know that foods that are high in omega-3 fats make a difference for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. These include things like salmon and flax seeds. We also know that high antioxidant foods make a tremendous difference. So anything that's deeply pigmented like your greens, so think kale or spinach or even beets and beet greens, carrots, any of them are providing a lot of glutathione to the liver to help it to repair and to do its job effectively. And if you want to learn more about glutathione, check out this video here. Now, in addition to that, garlic has been found to be very helpful, so much so that it's even taken in supplement form to reverse NAFLD. And then legumes, beans and lentils, lots of fiber, lots of great nutrients, also supporting the liver. Now, matcha tea is a great drink to add in. Maybe switch out the alcohol and add the matcha to help you reverse NAFLD. And sometimes, if none of these foods are really kind of whetting your appetite here, then we turn to supplements because they can play a supportive role. We know that turmeric makes a difference, doing about a gram a day. It's an anti-inflammatory. It supports the liver as well. We love milk thistle. Milk thistle is an herb I've been using for a really long time that helps, again, to reverse NAFLD. And if you don't like any of these high omega-3 foods, maybe taking an omega-3 supplement Usual dose is about two to three grams a day, can be helpful as well. Now remember, NAFLD can sneak up on you. It is reversible. It needs a good diet, good movement, a good weight, low body fat, low BMI, to really turn it and reverse it around. But the best news of all is when my patients do get those numbers lined out, their BMI, their body fat, their blood pressure, their blood glucose levels, their hemoglobin A1C, NAFLD goes away. All right, if you like this video, don't forget, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you suffer from NAFLD, talk to us. Tell us what happened and what's working for you. And if you've been able to turn it around, just comment below. And I will see you guys soon. And then we know leg legumes. We know. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Okay. Legumes. <laughs> All right. In addition to that, certain foods like legumes. <laughs>